We're going to start. Hi, my name is Dr. Joe Ritter. I'm the laboratory director here at Institute for Astronomy. What we do is remote sensing. Uh, we measure things from a distance. So my friend Dr. Gary Greenberg is a biologist who has developed novel, patented, amazing 3D technology uh, for microscopy. And you would say, what does that have to do with astrophysics? It's remote sensing. Um, so Gary, Dr. Greenberg, uh, has a PhD in developmental biology. Uh, so another uh, common thing, I used to work in developmental biology, but Gary is a real PhD in it. Uh, he invented 3D microscopes. He is an author of many books, including uh, books on sand. And ha does really the most amazing microscopy I've ever seen. He had the cover of Microscopy magazine, which if you're a microscopist, you know, that's it, right? Um, he's a, a TED speaker. And uh, together we are recipients of a NASA grant to study uh, sand on the moon, uh, where we're doing scanning confocal Raman microspectroscopy along with uh, 3D morphology with his amazing microscope. So uh, without any further ado, uh, Dr. Gary Greenberg. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Now, c can we turn the light? We're going to turn the light. So can, uh, Up here? These, these here, huh? Great, great. Good. And then I, I will still be in the light because I'm going to be here. No, thanks. So you won't need the 3D glasses until a little later. But when you do put them on, when I tell you to put them on, the red is on the left. So uh, fold them in the direction so that the red uh, is on the left and the, uh, yeah. So, the, but first we're going to, I'm going to talk about sand grains. And sand grains are not only on the Earth, but they're also ubiquitous all around the entire universe, including in outer space. So these aren't actually stars, but that's star sand from Okinawa. And these are little grains of sand. And uh, you can see them live under the microscope in, in the microscope lab a little later. And these are little foraminifera. They're actually the tiny, tiny, tiny houses of little, little protozoa. So sand, this is sand from Maui, Hawaii. This is some of the first sand that I've ever looked at. And I was asked when I saw what sand on Maui looked like. I thought it was just little brown rock. There's all things in the sand. Especially in Maui, there's lots of biological stuff. Um, there's things like um, sponge spicules and bits of sea urchin spine and uh, little micro shells and shell fragments, stuff from the volcano. A lot of totally amazing things. And so when I saw that, I really got hooked on sand and started looking at sand. Most sand in the world comes from the erosion of mountains. So being remade, mountains are being built up, and they're eroding away into grains of sand. It takes a long time, but it actually happens. And mainly water and ice and forth. So this is a fall. These waterfalls are bringing sand down into rivers that then go into the oceans. You might wonder, well, how can grains of sand actually erode away from rock? If you look at rock in a microscope uh, and you look at little tiny what rock is actually made of, you can see that they're made of all little tiny grains of different minerals. So what happens is when the uh, temperature freezes and thaws or water hits it, these little, these little grains of, of mineral are liberated. And these are grains of sand from Big Sur in um, California. And they get more and more eroded and rounded away until they finally disappear into little into silt and, and clay. Um, so this is some amazing sand. There's a green sand beach in the south point of Hawaii. It's a big olive, olivine outcropping. And that entire beach glistens this beautiful, beautiful uh, green grains of sand. They're totally amazing. You can see some of the little bits of sand from the, uh, the volcanic sand as well. Um, this is sand from the Galapagos Islands, and it has a lot of interesting mineral grains. Most of the sand in the world, or not most, but the most, um, uh, the, high, uh, the highest percentage of sand in the world is made of quartz crystal, because most of the rock in the world on the earth is, is granite rock, or a lot of it is granite rock, and what it erodes away, it erodes away into quartz crystal. This is very, very fine quartz crystal. There's no other things uh, in it, like feldspar and other sorts of minerals. And it's these sorts of uh, really, really pure quartz crystal that make things like glass, uh, computer chips, um, sand is used in concrete. So in this room right here, we have the concrete walls, 
the glass windows and the computers that make all this running, it's all made from sand. People say, well, is that what sand really looks like? The answer is, in science or in anything in the world today, when you look at things, you see what you see depends on what you're looking at it with. So this is sand looking with reflected light. This is the exact same sand looking with light going through it. So you can see the difference. This is reflected light. This is light going, light going through it. It looks completely different. So when you look at things from different points of view and different, uh, in different lights, in a different light, you learn different things about it. The original sand in the universe was created by exploding stars. This is an exploding star, and that's where the first sand in the universe was created. Stars burn hydrogen into, 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 into helium and then make the heavier elements, and when they explode, little tiny dust particles and grains of sand are formed. Also, the universe is a very violent place, and things are knocking into each other all the time. This is a little rendition, an artist's rendition, of what it might have looked like when the moon was originally formed. So the moon was formed by a collision of about a Mars-sized object of Earth about, four, and, uh, about 4.5 billion years ago. And all that debris went around to form the moon. And one of the reasons we know that is because the constituents of the surface of the Earth and the isotopes of all of what we find on the moon are the same. If we look at other things like meteorites and other planets, there are different isotopes and different combinations of minerals. But the moon and the, and, the, and the surface of the Earth have the exact same constituents. So that's how we know it was formed by an early collision. So all this sand is in outer space. And you can see it when you see a falling star. I'm sure we've all seen shooting stars. They're actually little grains of sand. I know it looks like it's really bright and lit up. But for the most part, they're little tiny grains of sand that are going 18,000 miles an hour, and it's igniting the atmosphere. So the air is actually glowing, and that's what you're seeing when you see the falling stars. But these are micrometeorites. They're the size of little tiny, tiny grains of sand. Um, and they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Uh, some are um, uh, this one I'm going to show you a little later. You can see right in the middle of it. You don't need your 3D glasses yet. Here it is tilted a little bit. You'll see that better in 3D. There's one that was a crystal, and it's almost completely melted. So I want to show you a little bit of moon sand. Uh, Dr. Joe Ritter and I have been looking at sand from the moon. Um, this is where they first landed in the Sea of Tranquility. And you see those dark areas on the moon? Those are actually lava flows. About 6.5 billion years ago and earlier on the moon, sorry, uh, 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 about 3.5 billion years ago and earlier on the moon, the moon was still volcanic. There are volcanoes, and these large lava flows can be seen. We call them the oceans or the seas. Um, now, if you look at the back side of the moon, there's no lava flows on the back side of the moon. You know there's only one side that, that we see. The moon and the Earth are kind of locked together, so we only see the front side. But when we went around uh, uh, looking at the other side of the moon, we noticed there's none of these. It all looks like this. It all looks cratered. The back side of the moon is much thicker than the front side, and there are various um, theories that explain why that might be. So I want to talk a little bit more about how in science we see things from different points of view. Moon sand, look, looking at with three different, tele three different microscopes. This is looking with a 3D light microscope, when you can see parts that are opaque, parts that light up, you can see colors. This is the same grain of sand using a scanning electron microscope. You see the surface really, really well, and you see things you wouldn't see there. Here's the same grain of sand looking with an X-ray microscope. And you see, again, a completely different thing. So in science, what we do is we look at things from many points of view, and we build a model of what it actually, is look, it actually looks like. Here again is that same grain of sand, and you can look at it from different angles. The back side may look completely different from the front side. So this is what science is about, looking at things from many points of view and then creating a model of what it looks like. So this is sand from no sand, the moon. And you notice there's a hole here. A micrometeorite went about 18,000 miles and just drilled a, a tiny, tiny hole into that grain of sand and melted it into a new grain of sand. There's lots of grains of sand on the moon that have holes in the middle of them. And that's very uh, characteristic of sand from the moon. There you can see it. And here you see the same grain of sand but turned on an angle and looking from a different angle. And you see that hole in the middle. And a lot of the gradients of sand from the moon were formed by a great amount of pressure temperature that made things squeeze. So this little tiny grain of sand has at least four different types of minerals all squeezed together in one grain of sand. There's a lot of glass on the moon because of the bombardment of the moon 
creates glass because of the heat from the bombardment. Um, little, little grains of glass are formed, and then they get shattered again. And the different colors have to do with the different temperatures that they and the different minerals that are there when the little uh, grains of glass were formed. And then they all get broken up again into little tiny pieces. And the sand on the moon is very dangerous to breathe, and it gets in all the workings of the spacesuits. So one of the main challenges for going to the moon is learning how to deal with moon sand and moon dust. Uh, here's a single grain of sand from the moon formed about 4 billion years ago, and it still has its whole crystal structure. Now, put on that's the microscope I use to take these. Put on your glasses so the red is on your left. And we'll look at a couple of these things in stereo 3D. I was, so that's that same grain of sand, but now you can actually see the crystal structure of it. You can see the parts sticking out. This is a big indentation that sticks out at you. And you can see, the, are you guys being, uh, can you see that? Good, okay. Uh, um, so you can see when you look at 3D, you get more information. So in science, we try, that's again, that other grain of sand that I was showing you how we look in different ways. Well, now we can see it in 3D. We see what the, de what the depth of each of these little particles are that make it, that, 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 uh, the constituents of it. So these are all little, this is from the Apollo 11 mission from the Sea of Tranquility, and so is this. And you can see the pressures that have occurred to make these things fuse together, these different, these different minerals fuse together. Here's another example, one where this one wraps around the backside and all got fused together. This is a, nu a number of different minerals. There's a bit of a glass there with probably iron rich. Now this is interesting. This is a grain of sand from a place called Trinity where they did the first atomic explosion. And this was a regular bit of quartz sand, but the temperature and the heat from the, from the atomic bomb you can see what it did to the, all these bubbles and the stress in it. And a lot of sand from the moon has a lot of incredible stress, too, because of the collision from which it was originated. These are a handful of little tiny micrometeorites from outer space. You can see some you can look right into the middle of. There's looking closer. You can see right inside. This is tiny. This is a tiny grain of sand from outer space that was once a shooting star. It landed in the South Pole, and the Army collected them and sent them to me to photograph in 3D. It's so small. It's, it's a half a millimeter. It's less than a half a millimeter. Really, really small. Yeah, you can't see. I mean, you need a 3D mic. People generally in the sections, then you never know what it really looked like. So we're using these microscopes that I developed. You can really see it in 3D. Now, this is a grain of sand from Corsica. This is uh, biological, so we're coming back to Earth here. And we're ending up with the star sand. So just to remind you that there's sand in outer space. And this is sand from um, Okinawa, Japan. And I think that's it. That's my latest book, which has sand from the moon and so forth. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>